and forgive and God forgive our so many sins na Mungu kwa kweli amesamehe dhambi zetu nyingi sana so God can forgive my numerous sins God forgive my numerous sins my many many sins Mungu amesamehe dhambi zetu nyingi zaidi so I want God to count the sins of other people kwa hivyo pia ninataka Mungu aendelee kusamehe dhambi za watu wengine and I want to forgive na pia ninataka kusamehe and then number five na ya tano we choose to obey tunachagua kutii na the choice to obey is not easy yani kuchagua kutii sio jambo rahisi let me use this illustration hebu nikatumie mfano huu have you seen a disobedient child ushawahi ona mtoto ambaye hawezi kutii have you seen a disobedient child ushawahi kuona mtoto ambaye hatii Have you? And those who have seen a disobedient child can you raise your hand? Wale ambao wameshawahi kuona mtoto ambaye hatii, hebu yuko mkono. Can you raise your hand? I think we all have seen a seen disobedient children, right? Now figure this is what to show why kuna mtoto ambaye hana tabia nzuri. Now what did they do? Wanafanya nini? The father say, let's go somewhere. Kwa mfano baba anasema kwamba hebu tuende sehemu hii. And they don't want to go. Na mtoto anamwambia baba mimi siendi. And the father say don't cry. Na baba anamwambia usilie. He keep crying. Anaendelea kulia. Now, can you tell the cry of a child the two kinds of crying? Kuna kulia mara pili. Some cry is like this because the uh, he's hungry, uh, he's painful and then ah oh, uh, ah uh, I'm hungry and painful. Some child, some children cry like that. Kuna kulia ambako ni kulia kwa kuonyesha kwamba labda mtoto anaijaa ama mtoto anasikia uchungu. But some children cry like this. <laughs> na watoto wengine wanalia sampli hii. No. <laughs> no reason. Yaani <laughs> wanalia lia tu. Hawana hata sababu ya kulia. They just want the parents to obey them. Yaani hawa watoto wanataka wazazi wao wawaheshimu wawatii Have you seen children like that? Mshawahi wana watoto kama hao. Have children like that? Yes. Wanajililisha tu ili kama ubebelezwe. This is this one as a strong will child. A strong will child. Have a strong will, strong intention, strong mind. Aha, huyu inamaanisha kwamba ni mtoto ambaye ako na mawazo tu yake ya kibinafsi tu ya kipekee kwake. When the father say go there and he doesn't want to go. Wakati baba anamwambia hebu kanende pale anasema mimi sitaki kwenda. His strong will. Yaani yeye ako na msimamo wake. Have you seen a strong strong will child? Ushawahi ona mtoto ambaye ana msimamo wake tu kibinafsi? What will happen when he grows up? Basi huyu ni mtoto na atakapokuwa mtu mzima nini kitafanyeni? When he grows up he will control his wife. Huyu mtoto Atapo, atakapokuwa mtu mzima atakuwa mtu hata wa kum, wa kumpigia kelele mkewe if he is a boss he will control his employee na yeye kama basi atakuwa ndiye tajiri kwenye kazi fulani hata wafanyikazi wanaofanya kazi chini yake watakuwa na matatizo he wants to control his children yani yeye hata watoto wake watakuwa na matatizo pia all the method he uses is controlling yani mbinu ambazo anazitumia ni zile za kuonekana kwamba yeye ndiye mkubwa he wants things done his way yani wanataka vitu vifanyike kwa njia zao hawezi wakasikia maoni ya watu wengine One time I was in China. Siku moja alikuwa katika nchi ya Uchina. We were waiting for a train. Na walikuwa wakisubiri ile gari moshi. You know in China there is one big problem. Unajua China kuna tatizo moja. Because in the past they only allow each family to have one child. Katika familia kwenye Uchina hapo siku zilizopita walikuwa nakubali kama wewe ni mume na mke, mtu na mtoto mmoja. And when they have this child they spoil the child. They spoil that means they just let them do anything and aha kwa sababu sasa mtoto ni mmoja watamtelekeza yani watamlea kwa njia ambayo ni ya kumbeba beba tu kumbebeleza so many of these children they grow up they become they become very selfish because they are always selfish they na sasa hawa watoto wanapokuwa wanakuwa watoto wa choyo kabisa and then they want everyone to do things for them na sasa kwa sababu kutoka kwenye utoto wao walizoea kufanyiwa vitu unataka pia hata watakapokuwa wakubwa wafanyiwe tu vitu. 
And we were waiting for the train, the train was late. Na sasa walipokuwa wakisubiria gari, gari moshi, gari likakuja limechelewa. And there was a man about 50 years old. Na tulikuwa na mwanaume pale ambaye ni wa umri wa miaka makumi matano. He yelled and said, "Open the gates." He yelled and said, "Open the gates." Na sasa alikuwa pale kwenye lango kuu akapiga kelele zaidi. But there was no one there. Na hatukuwa na mtu pale. And then he came at the glass gates. Na sasa zile milango za lango kubwa akaanza kupiga mateke. He came so many times the glass broke. Akagonga mpaka vioo vile vile milango vikapasuka. And then he climbed over to the train platform. To the platform of the train, to get on the train, the platform. Na akaruka akaingia ile sehemu ya juu ambayo watu wanaingilia ili waingie kwenye gari moshi. And later two officers took him back up. Lakini sasa maaskari wawili wakaja wakamkamata. This is an example of a strong willed child who grew up. Yaani hiyo ni huo ni mfano wa mtoto ambaye alilelewa vibaya, anapokuwa mkubwa ule ubaya wake unaongezeka zaidi. He was 50 years old, alipokuwa alikuwa mtu wa umri wa miaka 15, but he still won't think stand his way. Lakini anataka vitu vifanyike vile yeye anavyojua. When it's not done immediately, na vitu visipofanyika kwa hakika wakati huo, he will kick at the glass gates. Yeye ataanza kupigana chochote kile ambacho anataka. He cannot wait. Yaani ni mtu ambaye hana subira. Everyone has satisfied him. Yanataka kila mmoja lazima akue chini yake na afanye mambo kulingana na yeye. And in the train sometimes in China I saw this. Wakati mwingine kule Uchina kwenye gari moshi, there were a whole family there and one child. Kwa mfano kuna familia nzima pale na mtoto mmoja. And the child just cried. Na kama mtoto kanalia lia tu, kanalia lia tu. Just keep crying. Kanaendelea tu kulia kama mtoto. And the whole family would listen to the child and watch the child try to tease the child, make the child, you know, to peace, uh, to make him peaceful again. Na sasa familia yote itawacha kila kitu ambacho ni kuinafanyi na anza kumbebeleza uyo mtoto hili kwa basili. Everyone was trying to satisfy him. Yani kila mmoja na jaribu kumushibisha uyo mtoto. Now, the situation may not be so bad here. Aha, hiyo hali labda haiko huku. But I want to say, kinataka kusema. Each one of us has a strong will child inside. Kila mmoja wetu anao musimama wake tuwa kibinafsi. Each one of us sometimes will say, I want to be angry. Na kila mmoja lewa nakasema kwamba ni nataka kuwa na asira. I want to repay his badness. Nataka nilipishe ule ubaya wako. I want to hate him. Nataka nilimchukie. I don't want to obey. Sitaki kuti. I don't want to love. Sitaki kupenda. I don't want to do evangelism. Sitaki kufanya uinjilisti. We all have this strong will child. Basi kama sisori takuwa na musimamo kama huu. Who can grow up to be a strong Christian in the kingdom of God? Ni nani ambaye ataendelea awe mkuriso ambaye ni mkomafu katika ufalme wa mungu? It's a person who comes to God and say, Lord, I know your will is the best. Ni yule mtu ambaye atakuja na anyeke mbele za mungu wa sene kwa mba na juwa mapenzi yako ndiyo mema. I'm willing to submit. Na mimi ni na jiachilia kwenye mapenzi. Please forgive my sins. Na omba usamehe na bizamu. Please change my life. Badilisha maisha yako. I'm asking you, are you willing to change this strong will child inside of us? And ask the God to forgive us and give us strength and we'll submit to God. That's how we can become a great person in the kingdom of God. Let me say this. I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998. Yeye alijazwa ngubu za mungu zile miaka abadha mezisema hizo. At that time when I led meetings, people experienced the Holy Spirit. Na kutokea hapu alipu kwa kiongoza mikutano watu walikuwa na jazwa na roku takatifu. But God let me go through a 10 year training period. Lakini mungu alipa kipindi cha miaka kumi cha mafundisho. In those 10 years, I was not given the opportunity to do much. Katika kipindi hiyo cha miaka 10 hakupewa nafasi ya kufanya mambo mengi but i had to take care of my problems inside me lakini kilikuwa ni kipindi cha yeye kushughulikia matatizo yake kibinafsi and that is very important for anyone to be used by god basi mtu yeyote kutumikiwa na mungu ni lazima hilo jambo la muhimu alipitie muda wa mafundisho wa kuandaliwa is the 
Strong will child inside you willing to submit to God. Je, ule msimamo wako ambao wewe umeujenga, uko tayari kuyekea submit to God. If you are willing to submit to God. Kama uko tayari basi kunyekea kwa Mungu, then you can go higher and higher. Mungu atakuinua zaidi na zaidi. Amen. Now, the number four, I want to add something. The prayer is pray for forgiveness and for strength. Two reasons. So pray to for forgiveness and for strength. Even by way of the simple thought, we have to ask for forgiveness. Okay, now I use some more illustration. Nataka tena kutumia mifano mingine. For instance, when I see a sexy lady, kwa mfano anapomuona binti ambaye anavutia sana, I'm aware that I my eyes are attracted but are attracted by her. Tayari ana ufahamu kwamba macho yake yanaweza kuvutiwa na huyo binti. In me I know there's destructiveness. Na sasa anagundua kwamba hilo jambo ni haribifu. Because it will take away my joy. Kwa sababu litamuondolea furaha yake. Take away my good relationship with him. Litamuondolea uhusiano wake mwema na Mungu. Let me ask you. Hebu niwaulizeni. If you have looked at a beautiful woman one day and then you thought about a woman, does it affect your spiritual life? Je, katika maisha yako ya Ukristo, unapomuona binti anaye kuna wakati ambapo kwa mfano ulimuona binti anayevutia, je, hilo jambo liliharibu uhusiano wako na Mungu? Does it affect your spiritual life? Je, hilo jambo linaharibu maisha yako ya kiroho? Does it take away the peace? Je, linakuondolea amani? And make you feel guilty? Na linakufanya nikana kwamba umehukumika. So we become aware we are attracted sasa unakuwa na ufahamu kwamba wakati unapovutiwa a wrong way some people say oh I'm a terrible person I'm terrible watu wengine wanasema kwamba mimi ni mtu mbaya zaidi that's a wrong way to respond yani hiyo ni njia mbaya ya kuitikia God doesn't want us to respond like that Mungu hataki basi tuitikie sampuli hiyo the next step i realize is sinful we are going to unapo kunua kwamba ni dhambi and what does the bible say na biblia inazungumza kuhusu nini the bible say to Honor to respect my spouse. Biblia ni ambia kwamba ni kamti mke wangu ama mme wangu. And not to have any lust toward any other uh, uh, opposite sex person. Na sasa ni sivutiwe na mtu mwingine kando. And then number four, pray for forgiveness and for strength. Yaani ni ebu kaombe kwa sababu ya msamaha. And I choose not to look at the woman. Na sasa hebu chagua usiwe mtu wa kutazama mabinti. I choose to just bless the person. Wewe chagua ubariki mtu huyo and to put her down. I mean put her down means put down the thought about her. Na sasa mawazo mengine ya kinyume ukayaachilie chini. Okay? Now, another illustration. Like if we dislike someone, someone is, has done something bad and we dislike the person. Kwa mfano mtu ametenda mambo mabaya na haumpendi huyo mtu kabisa. Then I'm aware. I dislike the person. Yaani wewe uko tu na ufahamu kwamba haumpendi huyo mtu. And I know it's destructive. Na unajua unajua kwamba ni haribifu. It can hurt our relationship. Inaweza basi kuharibu uhusiano wako. And hurt my spiritual life and ministry. Na pia iharibu iharibu maisha yako ya kiroho na hata huduma yako. So what does the Bible say? Biblia inazungumza nini? The Bible says repay wickedness with goodness. Repay wickedness with goodness. When people give me wickedness I repay with goodness. Aha, Biblia inasema kwamba basi watu wanapokuletea mambo ambayo ni mabaya wewe lipisha na mambo mazuri. And I ask God to forgive me na uulize Mungu akusamehe and I ask God to help me to have compassion on him na sasa uambie Mungu akusaidie ukue na upendo nao because he has been hurt by many people kwa sababu yeye ame amewaleta watu wengi therefore he hurts me kwa sababu yeye amejeruhi watu wengi ndio maana anajeruhi I want to have compassion on him lakini mimi nataka kumpenda I want to bless him nataka nimbariki na I might need to find a way to solve the problem kwa hivyo nitajaribu kutafuta njia ya kusuluhisha tatizo. I might need to find a way to communicate with him to solve the problem. Nitajaribu njia za kupata huyu mtu tuzungumze ili tumalize mambo haya. But for me, I want to submit to God to obey God. Lakini kwa mimi nataka nikanyenyekee kwa sheria ya Mungu. When even when he's very wrong, hata kama 
hata kama yeye anafanya makosa zaidi I don't want to be angry with him and don't want to hate him Sitaki nimkasirishe na sitaki nimchukie It might take many prayer inaweza chukua muda mwingi for us to find and say ili sisi kutafuta mbinu kupata mbinu I want to bless him lakini useme kwamba unataka kumbariki. I want to do good things to him. Sema unataka kumtendea mambo mazuri. be nice to him. Unataka kuwa mtu mzuri kwake. So today my talk about the key to overcoming sins. Kwa hivyo leo pia tunazungumza ufungue jinsi ya kushinda dhambi. As soon as a simple thought comes up. Kwa hivyo kufungua ni kwamba wakati dhambi zinapokuja kwenye mawazo yako. We immediately take care of it. Wewe unazishughulikia kipindi hicho hicho. Don't wait for it to stay. Usiwaje dhambi zikakaa kwenye mawazo yako. Don't wait for it to destroy my life. Usiache zikaharibu maisha yako. Okay? Now I let you ask questions. Do you have questions about this? Now this five steps to victory didn't come from me. Basi hizi njia tano za ushindi hazijatoka tu kwake binafsi. It came from God. Zilitoka kwa Mungu. Have you noticed when we have sin Have you noticed when we have sinned? Why, gundua, gwamba, that we the Holy Spirit reminded us that we have sinned. Gwamba, roo, kwamba, and then Holy Spirit reminded us that it's bad and it's destructive and that God doesn't like it. Roo, na gwamba, gwamba, hiyo, ni baya, ni alibifu, na and the Bible and the, and the Holy Spirit reminds us of the Bible Now, Roho Mtakatifu anakukumbusha kuhusu Biblia. How to handle such a person? Jinsi ya kushughulikia mtu kama huyo. And then we we'll pray for strength. Na sasa tunaomba kwa ajili ya Mungu. And we we'll finally submit. Na sasa tunayenyekea. But for many people, kwa watu wengi, including me, including me nikiwa ndani mwao, that there were many times that we did not obey right away. Kuna wakati ambao sisi huwa hatutii wakati huo huo but now when i treasure god's love and blessings lakini ninapodhamini upendo wa mungu na baraka za mungu i want to obey god immediately when i hear the voice of the holy spirit nataka kumtii mungu wakati huo huo ninapotusikia na sauti ya roho mtakatifu and i know this that the more i take care of my sins na nimegundua kwamba ninavyoendelea kuzitunza dhambi zangu the more sensitive i am to sins the more sensitive I'm to sin then I'm not aware of my sins ninapoendelea kushughulikia dhambi zisije zikania zikaniadhiri ndivyo sasa naendelea kukaa mbali na dhambi and then I can overcome my sins quickly na sasa hivi ninaweza nikashinda dhambi zangu haraka okay any question je kuna swali for instance you might say in your situation does it work or do you understand this process kwa mfano kuna dhambi ama kuna vitu ambavyo vinakusumbua maishani nilipenda kusaidia kuhusu dhambi ama je unaelewa mambo haya yanayofundisha kama kuna swali muulize ninaogiza pia baada ya kuombea kuchukulia mwenye kwa na dhambi kufuatana na maandiko katika waraka wa kwanza wa Yohana sura 5 mstari wa 16 sema sema kuna jambo kuna neno nasema kuna dhambi zingine ambazo mtu hawezi kuombea so he said that there are some sins which we cannot pray for bona wanasema hii ni dhambi dhambi ya mauti yeah for example the sin of of death yes hiyo ndio nipende nipate so he wanted to ask about the sin which brings to death kuna zambi nyingine usiumke kama ni so he said that the question is this they are they are kind of sin we can't pray for because they are sins of death now the bible verse that talks about that the sins to death means that some people have persistently rejected god persistently sin and then this person that they, they have left lord And so in that case then you know we pray for people who who are still open to the work of God to repent but there are some people who have thus feel the holy spirit continue to reject God and then they are so stubborn that they cannot be forgiven but that's the case of people committing very serious sins hizo bibili napo zungumza kuhusu hizo hizo dhambi kwa mfano maandiko yanasema kwamba kuna dhambi ambazo mtu anaweza kumkufuru roho wa Bwana 
Ina maana mtu huyu ametenda dhambi ambazo zina uzito kabisa ambazo hawezi akaombewa msamaha. Now I want to say that for any sin like that it did not start with the sin to death. Nataka kusema kwamba hizo dhambi hazikuanzia pale ambapo hazikuanzia kwenye zimefikia ndipo zikaitwa dhambi za 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 mauti. It start with a small sin. Hizo dhambi zilianza na dhambi ndogo ndogo kwanza. So we want to start that as soon as we have this sin. Kwa hivyo ni lazima basi tuwachane na dhambi tu wakati ambazo zinapoanza kuja. And I want to say as long as a person wants to repent and want God to forgive them, nataka kusema basi mtu yote ambaye hawa tayari kutubu na angenipenda Mungu amsamehe. They have not committed a sin to death yet. Huyo mtu ina maana kwamba haja tena dhambi ambazo zinaitwa dhambi zinazo tuelekeza kwenye mauti. Because if a person has committed the sin, he doesn't want to repent at all. Mtu ambaye basi dhambi zake zinamuelekeza kwenye mauti ni yule mtu ambaye hataki kutubu kabisa. And I'm talking about handling your sin inside your heart. Na amezungumza kuhusu jinsi unavyoweza kushughulikia dhambi ndani ya moyo wako. So if we want to be saved then always we want to pray to God to help us overcome this sin. Basi kama ungelitaka kuokolewa ni lazima utaomba kwamba Mungu akusaidie ili ushinde dhambi. Okay, if I answer you. Thank you for giving the floor. Natafuta nijui namna gani tulipo kuokolewa. So I want Yes, I want you to know since you have been saved. Tulipata ukovu kwa neema kwa bure. Yes, we got salvation by grace. Tukafutwa hata kwa kitabu cha ufu wa milele. And we were erased from the book of death our names, our names were deleted erased from the yeah. book of, of death and our names were written in the book of life yani tunauzima wa milele sasa namna gani eternal life kabla tunalikia hapa duniani unaweza fanya dhambi naiba na zee sasa wanakuonesha ya kwamba unaweza enda jehenamu so how you as we still on the earth we, you do any kind of sin you still you kill and they tell you that you 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 be, ha, be going into the hell here moja pili that is the first question pili natafuta nijui tofauti kati ya dhambi ya asili na dhambi kawaida so i want you to know the difference which is between the sin related to the culture and the norm asili asili natural sin yeah the the, the, yes or the, the 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 sin which is related to the culture a, a natural sin okay oh that's natural sin yeah natural sin yeah natural sin what yeah. is that natural sin so, the sin which comes from eve and adam the original sin yeah the original sin yeah Okay. Now let me tell you this. The Bible does say that people's name, some people's name are written in the book of life. Biblia inasema kwamba kuna majina ya baadhi, kuna baadhi ya majina ya watu walioandikwa kwenye kitabu cha uzima milele. But it doesn't mean everyone in the church their name is written in the book. Lakini haimaanishi kwamba kila mmoja mwenye anaenda kanisani jina lake limeandikwa katika kitabu cha uzima wa milele. In the parable of the sower, katika ile katika ile adhibi ya mpanzi, there were four kinds of soil. Tulikuwa na aina nne za udongo. The rocky ground, kulikuwa na udongo ambao ni wa mwamba. The shallow soil, ambao una udongo mdogo. The soil with thorns and thistles. Tulikuwa na udongo ambao ulikuwa na miba. And the good soil, tulikuwa na udongo mzuri. Now the ones in the on the rocky ground, immediately the seed were eaten by Satan. Zile mbegu zilizoanguka katika miamba nyuni wa angani walikuja wakakula zile mbegu. And a second kind of belief for a short time and then they have no root and now, then they lose salvation. Na udongo wa listen. Come to listen. You should, should listen. Wanajibu swali lako mamangu jamaa. I'm answering your question. Wanajibu swali lako. Naomba usikilize sasa. Okay. So the second Soil is the soil, the shallow soil. They believe for a short time, and then when there's persecution, they lose faith. 
Kwa hivyo mbegu za pili ziliangwi kwenye udongo zikamea tu kidogo ni watu wale ambao wanapookoka majaribu ya kija madogo wanapoteza ukuu. And the third kind of sorrow is because of the love for the world and the worries of this life take away their faith. Na udongo wa tatu ni zile mbegu zilizoanguka ni wale watu ambao wanapokuwa katika wokovu wanashikwa na msukosiko na mawazo mengine ya kidunia alafu wanapoteza wokovu wao. The Bible has many passages that talk about people can lose their salvation. Basi Biblia ina mistari mingi inayozungumza kwamba watu wanaweza kupoteza wokovu. I know there is a teaching called one say always say. I don't know if you have heard of it. Najua kuna fundisho linalosema kwamba kama umeokoka umeokoka milele yote. But actually the Bible doesn't support it. Lakini maandiko hayagusu. I I it came from a theological argument. Man, ili fundisho litokana na zile mijada na za kitheologia. There are many passages that I can show you that shows that Christian can lose the faith. Kuna mistari mingi ambayo ninaweza nikakuonyesha inayozungumza kwamba Mkristo anaweza kupoteza imani. I want to say this like this is all the Christians in the world that seems to be Christian. <laughs> Nataka kusema kwamba hawa ndio watu duniani kote ambao wanajifanya kuwa wakristo. Some of them were not saved eventually. Some of them were not saved eventually. Ha, wengine wao hawakuokolewa wakati huo. These people were never in the book of life. Hawa watu ina maana kwamba hawako katika kitabu cha uzima. Those who are saved, you know, forever. Wale ambao wameokolewa na milele yote. Their names are on the book of life. Majina yao yako kwenye kitabu cha uzima wa milele. So these people might seem to believe for a while. Hawa watu wanaojifanya kuamini tu kidogo kwa they don't change a relationship with God. Lakini hawana uhusiano na Mungu. Or they fall away from God. Ama wanaanguka kutoka kwa Mungu. The Bible does talk about the danger of falling away from God. Biblia inazungumza kuhusu hatari ya kuanguka kutokana kwa Mungu. I can give many many passages about that. Naweza kupa mistari mingi sana. Okay. The Bible did not say the name is taken out from the book of death. There is no such Bible verse. There is no such Bible verse that said that the name is taken out from the book of death. The Bible doesn't say that. Akuna mstari wa Biblia na usema kwamba jina linaweza kuondolewa kwenye kitabu cha mauti ama li Ifo. Na mimi nitakuuliza Yes, I wanted to ask. Na shukuru kwa mafundisho ya mwalimu wetu. We thank you for the teaching of our. Kiko fasi moja sikusikia nitauliza hizo mbili. But I haven't heard somewhere and so I have to ask two questions. Ulizo ya kwanza, the first one is eh barapanda ikilia sasa hivi vitabeba ni watakatifu wakamilifu. So when mwalimu anatuambia kama hapa chini ya jua hakuna mkamilifu. Yes, parapan is what? Trumpet. Yeah? Yes. The, if the trumpet is, uh, is just around. Yes, yes. If. Yes, when the trumpet is there, and then the Bible says that those uh, perfect uh, uh, believers will be taken to into heaven. Yeah. But you say that we have no perfect on the earth. That is a question. What you are explaining is not what he asked. Oh. No, no, no. He never had your little husband be. Uh-uh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. No, the trumpet. The perfect. Somebody's perfect, you know? This, this is his question. He's asking like this. According to he is asking like this according to what you are teaching it is like there is none even who is righteous upon the earth whereby when Jesus Christ will come right now then what will happen? But again, from his understanding, he understands that when Jesus comes, he will take the race as well. Ulizo ya pili. Ulizo ya pili. The second question. 
inasema hivi e, ikiwa mtu amekula haki yako na kila siku unamuona kujia alikula haki yako utaendelea kumsamee na kumfurahia sababu hata Joseph mkubwa yake angekia yake kumwangalia ku prison sijui angemwangalia namna gani na ngali mu prison sasa mwalimu watu fafanulie kabisa mtu mwanakula haki yako na unaendelea kumuona alikula haki yako so this is the question if somebody has taken your right 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 yes for example you remember that story of joseph now you are if somebody has taken your right in every time on the road you are meeting this person will you continue to forgive him and will you continue to love him okay now i'm going to answer the two questions first question is jesus will take the righteous to him nataka kujibu maswali haya wawili swali la kwanza nasema hivi yesu atajinyakulia wale wenye haki the righteous will enter the kingdom of god wenye haki wataenda katika ufalme wa mbinguni it doesn't mean he takes the perfect one haimaanishi kwamba anachukua wale ambao ni wema our perfection came from jesus christ wema wetu unatokana kwa Kristo Yesu. When we are truly sorry for our sins, kama sisi tunatubu na kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu na yekea kwa Mungu. And trust in Jesus as our savior. Na tuamini Kristo kwamba ndiye mwokozi wetu. Then we are forgiven and we are the righteous. Sisi tumesamehewa na tayari tumekwisha kuhesabiwa haki. The point is, kwa hivyo jambo la msingi ni hili. After we are forgiven, tukisha maliza kusamehewa if a person continues sin without repentance mtu akiendelea kufanya dhambi pasipo kutubu he doesn't have real faith huyo mtu hana imani now i want to say this different people handle the sins differently nataka kusema kwamba watu wengi huwa wanashughulikia dhambi katika njia tofauti some people sin many times before they repent watu wengi wanatenda dhambi vipindi virefu kabla hawajatubu some people are about to sin and immediately they repent na kuna wengine ambao kama wako tayari kutenda dhambi wanaacha na wanatubu now if this person who sin many times before they repent if they really repent they are still saved Hawa watu ambao wametenda dhambi kwenye vipindi virefu wakitubu tayari Mungu anawakubali. But the problem is his life will suffer many destruction. Kwa hivyo tatizo ni kwamba maisha yao yatakuwa na matatizo kwa vipindi virefu. His family, his inner life, his spiritual life is ministry yake na hata huduma wake utaribika. So If they really repent and change lakini kama watatubu na kubadilika kabisa they are forgiven wao wamesamehewa but they suffer the consequence of their sins lakini they suffer the consequence of their sins lakini basi yale matokeo ya dhambi watayapitia like david he committed adultery and murder kama daudi aliua watu na pia alifanya uzimivu he suffered the consequence of those sins yale matokeo ya zile dhambi yalimpata he but he was forgiven and he can go to heaven ijapokuwa alisamehewa na anaweza kwenda mbinguni but there are people who superficially repent lakini kuna watu ambao wanatubu kihaki They say I can sin many many times and God still forgive me. Yaani wao hawa watu ni wale watu wa sample inayosema kwamba watatenda tu dhambi na alafu wataomba Mungu msamaha wa There is a danger he can lose salvation. Basi kwa kuendelea na zile dhambi kuna hatari ya mtu kupoteza wokovu. We cannot play games with God. Hatuwezi tukafanya mizaha michezo na Mungu. We cannot despise God. Na hatuwezi tukamdharau Mungu. Any sin has destructiveness. Yaani dhambi yote ina uharibifu wake but the, when we are really sorry for our sins lakini tukisema kwamba tunajutia kwa sababu ya dhambi zetu and trust in jesus forgiveness na tuamini katika msamaha wa kristo yesu then we have eternal life tutakuwa na uzima wa milele but the problem is many christians their life is ruined lakini shida ni kwamba wa kristo wengi maisha yao mengi yameharibiwa they are saved by god they are saved and forgiven by god dhambi zao zime samehewa na Mungu but the whole life is a ruin lakini maisha yao yote yamekwisha kuharibika 
and they cannot bear much fruit for God. Na sasa hawawezi kuleta matunda mengi kwa Mungu because they live in sin. Kwa sababu wanaishi katika dhambi. Okay? Now there's a second question. Swali la la pili. Is someone have seen very bad to me? Kama mtu amekuwa mbaya sana kwetu jamani kama kuna mtu amebaki na swali nyingine aweze baadaye. If this is a person kama huyu ndiye mtu he continue to do bad things to me anaendelea kutenda matendo mabaya kwangu. He continue to hurt me anaendelea kunijeruhi kuniumiza. Let me ask you whose problem is it? Is it his problem or my problem? Wacha nikuulize shida ni huyo anayeniumiza ama shida ni mimi ninayeumizwa? You who is being hurt. No, whose problem is it? If he continue to hurt me without reason, is it my problem or is it his problem? Kama huyu mtu ataendelea kuni kunichokoza, shida ni ya huyu mwenye anichokoza, shida ni ya nani kati ya hao watu wawili? Who has committed sins? Who has nani ametenda dhambi? Who has committed sins? The person who hurt me, right? Mtu anayemtokoza ndiye ametenda dhambi, si ndio? So he has hurt me. He has hurt me. Do I want to take the hurts? Do I want to take the hurts? Huyu mtu ameniumiza, amenichokoza, je, ningelipenda kukamata yale machokozi yake nikae naye? If I take the hurt and hate him, then I say. Basi kama yeye atanichokoza, alafu pia mimi nitaki kumchokoza, nitakuwa nimetenda dhambi. Then I suffer the consequence. Alafu pia mimi sasa nitapokea yale yale matokeo ya zile dhambi. And it's not worth it. Na sio ya muhimu. This is very important concept. Hili ni fundisho muhimu zaidi. No matter how bad he is, huyu mtu haijalishi ni mbaya kiwango kipi. If I hate him, mimi nikimchukia, I will suffer. Mimi pia nitatenda dhambi. So I choose not to be affected by him. Mimi sitataka yeye akinichokoza nichukue ule uzito. I choose to have compassion on him. Mimi nitaendelea kumpenda because he will face the punishment of God. Kwa sababu yeye atadhibiwa tu na Mungu pekee. He is in a very terrible condition. Yeye yuko katika hali hatari. So I have mercy upon him. Kwa hivyo mimi nitamwonea huruma and forgive him and nimsamehe and bless him and nimbariki and put down my anger. Na hasira zangu niziweke shi. So I will not take any of his sins. Kwa hivyo mimi sitachukua dhambi zozote ambazo ni za kwake. So I won't suffer from his sins. Kwa hivyo yeye na dhambi zake zitakuwa ni zake mimi When he hurts me, yeah, I'm not It is his problem. Shida ni yake, not my problem. Sio shida yangu. So, no matter how bad a person is, I choose you. I choose you to you by a kwa bogani that you need to And I choose to stay in joy. Na mimi nita endelea kuishi katika furaha. For instance, John the Baptist was, you know, was uh, His head was cut off by Herod. He was put in prison by Herod. Yohana mbatizaji alipowekwa gerezani na Herod, but he did not hate Herod. Lakini yeye hamtukia Herod. And Joseph was sold by his brothers, but he did not hate them. Na hata Yusufu aliuzwa na ndugu zake lakini hamwachukia. And that is victory. Na akawa mshindi. Because we treasure God's love kwa sababu sisi tunadhamini upendo wa Mungu. I treasure God's blessing in my life. Na tunadhamini baraka za Mungu maisha ni mwetu. I treasure my life. Na mimi ninadhamini maisha yangu. I don't want anyone to destroy God's plan in my life. Sitaki mtu yeyote aharibu mpango wa Mungu ndani ya maisha yangu.